Hi, this is Brady Volk with The Volk Firm. Today we're going to talk about installing the Nano VNA Saver for use with your new Nano VNA. To do that, we're going to go directly to the Nano VNA Saver GitLab page. Here you can see, scrolling down, our latest changes. Currently, we're on version 3.8 of the Nano VNA Saver. Allows editing bands of up to 2.4 gigahertz. It supports the Nano VNH F version, version V2, which goes up to 3 gigahertz. And then further down here, we can see our binary releases, starting off with a 64 bit release for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So this is where our releases are. We can just click on this. Uh, we'll see there is a pre-release version, version 3.9 right here. I'd re recommend going down to the latest releases and then scroll down. We can see for if you're a Windows user, you can grab your 64-bit or 32-bit for Windows and download that. And then we also have Linux and Mac OS releases here. We'll go back and look at the Windows releases. So for Windows 7 and Windows 10, you do recur require Service Pack 1 and Microsoft VCC Plus. To install, for Windows 7 and 10, you can download the executable and run it directly on your machine. There is no other required installation. For Ubuntu 1804 and 1904, that does require that you install Python 3.7 and pip. For Python 3.7, just run sudo apt install Python 3.7 and Python 3-pip. Then clone the repo, update pip. And once you're completed, you can just run Python 3.7 nano, nano vna saver.py. And that'll start running the application. We're going to show the installation on a Mac OS. There are two options for Mac OS. You can run Mac ports or you can run homebrew. My preference is homebrew. And to do so, you will need to start running a terminal on your Mac. If you've never run a terminal on Mac, it's totally time to start doing so. Running a terminal on Mac gives you a lot of power to start doing new things, running new things on your Mac OS. Just bring up your terminal. If Also, if you've not installed Homebrew before, you'll want to do that. Homebrew gives you the option to start running, a, start running and installing a lot of new applications on your Mac that you would not be able to do so without doing in the terminal. So to do that, go ahead and copy and paste this into the terminal and hit enter enter your password. I already have installed Homebrew, so I'm not going to do that. Another thing I recommend doing, if you have already have Homebrew in installed, go ahead and do a brew update. That will update your Homebrew to its latest. You can see I'm already up to date with my Homebrew installation. The next thing you want to do is go ahead and install Python. I've already installed Python, so it's probably going to tell me that it is up to date. Yeah, so it says, you know, warning, Python 3.9 is already installed and up to date. If I wanted to install that, it Homebrew will guide you through the process. So it says to reinstall, run brew reinstall Python 3.9. So I could just copy and paste that command and reinstall it. Not going to do that. When you run the install for Python, be sure to watch everything that's happening in the terminal here. It's about a 10 minutes to, it takes about 10 minutes to install Python on your Mac. Make sure you watch any messages that occur during the installation because you may need to run an additional can command to make sure that Python installs correctly. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and install pip. To do that, we run this curl command. So just enter the command. It downloads pip. And then we run python to install pip. Again, I've already installed pip, so we'll see what message it gives me. It should just say, uh, yeah, I guess it just reinstalls pip automatically. So now we've, we've installed pip. 
Now we're going to get NanoSaver from its repository. So we git clone it. So I, I've already installed and it's just saying it's not an empty directory. Now we change, we, so we, cop, we CD into that nano VNA directory. So change directory into nano VNA saver. And now we're going to install it. I've already installed it, so it may throw an error here or maybe it'll just reinstall. So great. So it's successfully installed nano VNA version 3.8. And now the final step is to run it. So to run it, we run Python 3. So we're, we're saying run Python 3 and run nano, PNA, nano VNA saver pi. So as soon as we hit this, we should see the application come up. So now we have the application up here. We want to make sure that we actually have our nano VNA saver connected to our computer. So I have a cable here connected into the nano VNA saver. This connector goes over to the computer, which is just off screen here. It's connected via USB to the computer itself. So the nano VNA is up and running, connected to the computer, and now we're gonna connect it to the nano VNA saver application. So we'll go down here to the bottom and we'll click this rescan button here. And this just shows the where the nano VNA is connected to. So it is seeing it, it's detecting the nano VNA, and now we connect to the device. There we go. So we see data has populated, we see traces from the nano VNA have been picked up by the nano VNA saver application. There are a couple of nice little changes that I make, like to make here in the display setup. So one of them is I like to show line displays, and that basically connects the dots. So see, as soon as I do that, instead of just having dots, I connect the dots with a line. So I'll toggle that back off and we'll see down here, we just have dots. If I turn this back on, now we connect the dots with lines. Another change I like is all the, all the words are really small. The numbers are really small. Here we go. I like to increase the marker size a little bit and I like to increase the point size and I also like to increase the line thickness just a little bit. And then we go into the font size and let's increase that font size up to about a size 12 font there. Maybe maybe size 10 font, make it a little better. So those are the changes that I like to make. So now we can see the font a little better. We see the line size a little better. And now from a cable industry standpoint, in the cable industry, I don't use Smith charts at all. So I'm gonna eliminate these two Smith charts just so I have my S11 and my S21 parameters on the screen. And to do that, we go back into display setup. On the bottom down here, I'm gonna take my S11 Smith chart and just say none. And I'm gonna say my, look at my S21 polar chart and click none there. So now I can see my S11 primary and my S21 are the primary there. And also keep in mind, from here, we can click on the time domain reflectometer chart, and this is our TDR. So our TDR allows us to estimate how long a coax cable is. For a lot of our coax cable here, it's awesome. They have them all listed in here. For many of our measurements, I'm going to be using RG59, 75 ohm, Belden. It has a velocity of propagation of 0.78. I'm gonna select that as my default. So if I'm measuring any TDR measurements, that's automatically selected. And I'll just go ahead and close that. So I hope that was helpful. That's a quick overall of how you can install Nano VNA Saver on your Windows, your Linux machine, or your Mac OS. We'll be using this for all future tests moving forward on our Nano VNA. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. Please do drop your comments below. If you're using something other than Nano VNA Saver that you find maybe helpful, let us know. We'll be interested in what you're using for your Nano VNA. Stop back for more. Thanks for watching.